Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I have a review of the Cotman Sketcher Box by Windsor & Newton. I picked this up a few months ago. It was on sale. I've wanted this palette for a few years. Actually, probably probably since I first cast my eyes on it many years ago. I thought it was really cute, but it was very expensive. The uh, Cotman version was going for around $75, and the... Um, and the professional version was also, I don't know, I think that was about $150. So it was just a little too rich for my blood. Already, I feel like I have messed up the loop on the back of it. So that's my good, oh my, okay. I didn't break it, but I'm definitely gonna have to put it back in there. This is not boating well for this, this poor little palette. Luckily, I tend not to hold the the, uh, the palette in my hand, but, um, but let's take a look at it, and you can decide whether it's something that you might be interested in. A couple months ago, these also went on sale for like 20 bucks on Amazon, so um, like I, I was thrilled to find mine at 23, then they went on sale for 20, I just thought that was just fantastic, just for the palette alone. Um, so I did, I did uh, tell people about it. I have reviewed Cotman watercolors in the past, I'm very familiar with Cotman watercolors, because I think that's where most people start out. Um, they're available in almost every art supply shop uh, in America, probably around the world. They're probably the most, Windsor Newton is probably one of the most easily to, easy to find watercolor brands. Um, I think they invented like what tube watercolor back in the impressionistic times. Um, I could be wrong, but I, I think so. Uh, but anyway, so you take the cap off and then you open it up and you've got a little travel brush, you have got a flask, and I left my palette dirty just so you could see that the paint does not beat up, which is really nice. You have got um, two more fold-out wings that you can mix pal uh, paint on, which again, the paint doesn't beat up, which is nice. And at least with the common watercolors, it's not beating up. Now, I just put a paper towel in there. Um, this cap will go here. And if you have this filled all the way up, which is mine's not because I just used it yesterday and squirted it all out, it will halfway fill that container, which actually, as um, I don't know if my whiskey painters review is up yet, but um, I found that when you've got a pot, when you've got a little cup like this hooked to your palette, filling it up halfway is just about right, otherwise it's going to slosh out. I did add in uh, two pans here, which um, because I felt the the selection of colors that came with this kit to be very lacking. Um, so I added in Cotman paints, I added in a um, yellow ochre and a permanent rose just to have a cool red and a uh, yellow ochre was pretty indispensable for me. So I wanted to have those while I was using it, but I did, what we're going to talk about here is the paints that come in the kit and uh, everything that comes in the kit basically um, because you probably wouldn't have extra pans lying around to add into it. I just want to give you a good overview of what we have here. So um, I will say this flask is really easy to fill up like under a um, under the sink. I usually honestly use my teeth to pop that out. I know it's not a great idea. So you might want to have something to pry that off with. It fills up really easily and it pours out really easily. I don't think I, yeah, I don't have anything left in there. Well, a couple drops, but, um, but so no qualms there. That works really well. It seems to not, hasn't leaked on me. So that's good. The brush leaves something to be desired. Uh, I'm very familiar with these brushes. They come in the, the uh, 12 Sketcher box. At least they used to. I'm not sure if they do anymore. I'm just going to fill this up halfway just so we can have an approximation about what we would have here. Um, I really dislike these brushes. So um, I try, you know, I did a, I did an illustration just with these brushes. I'm going to show just with that one brush because I wanted to have a really fair... Um, I'm going to zoom out a little bit, a really fair approximation of what you would do with this. Um, I find that, found that brush very unpleasant to use. It's small, but for details, it is really not great. Um, let me just, let me just show you here. So, it doesn't hold a lot of paint. I can try working up kind of a bigger bigger amount of color here. It's not too bad if you get a big amount of color, but I found it really challenging to get fine details with it. I mean, that's not bad, but you have to have your brush really well loaded, I feel like, to get the fine. Now here, of course, it looks like the brush is, is performing just fine and dandy, but let me tell you, it was not fun to paint with, and um, I really don't have much use for a brush this small when I'm plein air painting. I want something where I can put a big wash in, and, um, and obviously I would just bring my own travel brushes, but I just want to say that in case, uh, just 
to let you know what's in this brush. I'm very familiar with these because they often are included in different promotions. Uh, a couple of years ago they had an Arches watercolor promotion where you could buy, you'd buy a block of 9x12 Arches paper and you would get six tubes of Winsor Newton Professional and then this brush. So I have quite a few of these kicking around that I'll use in little travel kits and whatnot, but not my favorite. Uh, so looking at the colors that are in this kit, I put tape over the ones that I added. We've got Alizarin Crimson, and I actually noted down the the pigment information, which they've changed their pigment information over the years. They've changed the pigments. They've changed the colors that they include in their sets. So um, I'm actually getting a little uh, frustrated, I think, with Winsor Newton products lately because I feel like either the quality's gone down or what they include in the pre-made sets is not as good. Like they're, they're including the cheaper colors that aren't as useful or I, I don't know, I feel like the colors that they included in here were just really weak and um, not the most useful. I mean, some of them are good, but a lot of them, I mean, there could be there could be changes that would make these this so much better. So what we have is Lemon Yellow, PY175, nothing wrong with that. Cad Yellow Hue, they used to use real cadmiums back in the day, um, and they just charged more for those colors, and that was not a problem, but now they price everything into the same, and they've cheaped out on a lot of the ingredients, in my opinion. Um, Cad Yellow Hue PY97 plus PY65, Cad Red Hue, which is PR149 and PR255, then you've got Alizarin Crimson PR206, so they are using a, uh, a substitute from the old fugitive PR83, which is good. Doxazine Purple PB23, nothing wrong with that. Ultramarine PR, uh, PB29, nothing wrong with that. Cerulean Blue, this should be P PB35. But it, or PB36, but this is a PB15, which means there's white added, and they, companies don't need to disclose when they use white um, in if they're using PW4 in a mix. And I think we have a lot of filler in some of these colors that are lightening up and making the color just kind of like, it's almost syrupy when you add water to it. And I think my opinion on these paints have has gone down over the last few years, and I don't necessarily think the paints have changed, but I've just seen so many equivalent paints coming out way cheaper, like the Mia Himmy watercolors, which seem to be identical, the Phoenix watercolors, which are identical. Um, so I think maybe I'm just seeing so much, and for so much cheaper, that I'm just kind of like, I don't know, getting frustrated with this, I guess. Um, Sap Green, I prefer their Olive Green, personally, but that's a mix of three colors, PY139, PG36, and PR101. Then we've got Burnt Sienna, PR101, Burnt Umber, PBR7, plus PY42, which is like your um, yellow ochre, raw sienna color. Then we've got a Payne's Gray, which is a mix of three colors, PBK7, PB29, which is our ultramarine blue, and PB15, which is our phthalo blue. And then we've got a PB5 Chinese White, which is kind of one of those colors that doesn't really do much other than make your paint thicker, really. Um, so if it was me, I would say get rid of the Chinese White, um, swap the, uh, and give it, give us Yellow Ochre, swap the Cerulean Blue for a Windsor Blue or Thalo Blue or Intense Blue, any of those like straight Thalo PB15 blues that's going to be much more better for mixing and much brighter, um, less milky, less chalky. I would get rid of the Elizabeth Crimson and put in a permanent rose or a magenta, something that's actually a really cool true red instead of that um, very bland, dull um, Elizabeth Crimson hue they have there. Um, so that would be my, I think if, if they did that, this, this would be twice as good as far as the paint's concerned. I'm going to put different paints in here. I wanted, I, I figured for 23 bucks it was worth it for the palette, and that's the way I looked at it with these cotton paints, and that's how I think a lot of people look at the student grade sets. Um, if the palette's a decent deal, you can just fill it with whatever you want. You can either pop out the paints, or you could um, just buy new half pans and fill them up. I will probably, I'll save the half pans and uh, use them to refill my student palettes that I use at the library because some of the a lot of the colors are included in the sketcher box so I'll just replace them. Um, I'll use them for replacements. But uh, but some colors like I, I really just like that cerulean blue because it's just so it's not a real cerulean. You might as well just give me a phthalo blue and just leave the white out of it. Some hues are fine. Some hues really are their um, their hindrances basically. So this is the color swatched out, pretty much mass tone, so we can see how bright they are. This was just me doodling around just to play with the paints. This is Arches paper, and I was not feeling it, and usually even paints I'm not crazy about on Arches paper I'm going to like pretty well. 
Oh, here are the two colors I added just for your reference. I'll take the tape off here just so you can see. Yellow ochre and permanent rose. Those, I, I just feel like those are so handy, such great mixing colors, so good for uh, botanicals, and um, they're just indispensable in my opinion. All right, so I did some primary mixing. I did a cool primary and a warm primary. They just, I used a, I used this brush even, a, a fairly firm tackle on brush to make sure I was getting up plenty of pigment and it still faded and got so dull with my cool primaries and my warm primaries. The yellows are decent. Um, the warm red's okay. The, the cool red, that crimson, is just dull. I got a very dull purple. Now, generally, I wouldn't use crimson. I wouldn't use a, um, I wouldn't use a warm, I'm sorry, I wouldn't use a cool blue to make my purple. Generally, I would use, like, ultramarine. And I find that I do need to dig with this set. Maybe because they're half pans. Because, like, I have the studio set of full pans back from the 90s, and I feel like that paint is just a little bit more robust. Maybe it's the full pans because you don't have to dig as much. I don't know. So if I use my my purple leaning red and my purple leaning blue, I do get a better purple. But when it dries, you're going to notice a shift, which I noticed a big shift with these color wheels I made here. Um, it's just kind of, it's just a little disappointing, I should say. Uh, I like the palette. I think the palette is really nice quality, although that ring on the back probably is not going to last long if you actually use it as a ring. But um, I think what I would recommend, if depending on how different the price is, to go for the professional colors. The colors in the professional set are a little bit better. They don't have the, it doesn't have the white. Um, what's it using for its red? Let's see, it's still using alizarin crimson. It's using uh, Windsor lemon. It's got the sap green. Um, it's got yellow ochre. It's got a um, burnt sienna and a burnt umber. Payne's gray, black. It's got, it's got a phthalo blue, Windsor blue. And what's the other one? It's got, oh, cadmium free red. That's their latest thing. Windsor Newton's going cadmium free, which basically I think it's, cadmium free is essentially a hue. It's not using the expensive cadmium paints. There's been big fervor over using cadmium. And quite frankly, I think they kind of just took that opportunity to be able to use cheaper pigments and charge a premium for it and act like they're being socially responsible. I don't buy it. I don't buy it. They've moved their factories over to China. They've re relaunched their pastels made in China. They've, um, they launched colored pencils made in China. No open stock replacements for those. So I've just kind of got a little bit of a chip on my shoulder or a little, maybe I have a little bit of an axe to grind. I don't know. It's just kind of, I feel like they're trading on their, on their name and calling these, some of these products professional, which are clearly white labeled stuff. So anyway, I'm, I've am i really lost a lot of trust and faith in this brand, quite frankly. And I've had a lot of people tell me their professional set of 24 has been a great price, under $100 on Amazon. So I investigated it because I bought that set for like 80 bucks a few years ago, back in 2016. It was a good set, good, well-balanced set. And so I went to compare what I got in mind compared to what they're selling now. And it's instead of cadmium colors, it's cadmium free. And uh, they've swapped out um, a few of the colors for less useful, cheaper pigment colors. There's no Viridian in that set, no, no true Viridian, which is a more expensive color. So I'm just like, there's, I don't, there, there's no deal here. They're just, they're just doing a little switcheroo and I'm sorry, I'm not here for it. I'd say if you want to buy this for the palette and the palette is like, you know, 20, 25 bucks and you're going to switch it out and put your own paints in there, go for it. I will say there is one use I think this would be really good for this set here as it is. And that would be for, um, if you're a scrapbooker or a card maker and you like to travel because you can fit this in your travel bag. It doesn't take up much space. You got, you got enough water. You've got a tiny little brush to color in stamped images, to do little doodles on your scrapbook pages or make little frames or whatever. That's what this would be ideal for. Um, I could pop this right in my scrapbook bag and use it for card making and uh, scrapbooking where I might be working on cardstock or vellum or um, or Bristol, not like real cotton watercolor paper. Paints like this actually do better on the cheaper paper versus professional paints because professional paints will kind of seep into the cheaper paper and be all spotty and splotchy where these will actually sit on top of the paper a little bit more and be uh, and be easier to work with. So this would be better for a situation like working on cardstock if you're a card maker or a scrapbooker. Um, and plus it's so little to carry around it would be really handy. Now one other thing I want to mention is that this comes with a um, 
this comes with a sponge in this area where those two pans are so it would be for like wiping your brush off um, there's enough room in the cap if you want to fold up a paper towel and throw it in there but um, but overall I'd say the palette is innovative the palette is really nice the paints the paint selection that's in the current field box leaves something to be desired personally I would not recommend this selection of paints. I think it'd be kind of frustrating for a beginner who's trying to learn to mix colors. It's It does come with a purple, so you don't need to mix a purple, but if you're trying to mix like a specific purple, um, you can struggle. You can struggle because if you want to make it a little bit pinkier, you've got the crimson. The crimson is going to really desaturate. Even if you take that dioxazine purple and you mix it with the alizarin crimson to try to make it a little bit pinker, you're going to make it muddier. And that's going to that's going to enforce bad I don't know it's just going to, it's not going to teach somebody what they need to know about color mixing I think it would be a hindrance when before I've always like recommended Cotman like the regular sketcher box because if the colors just seemed a little bit more pure and I struggled to mix with this set so and there was a lizard and crimson in the old sketcher boxes so I don't know why all of a sudden it's harder to mix those two colors ultramarine blue and crimson and get a decent purple I mean this is not that's okay, but it used to, it seems like it used to be much more vibrant. Maybe it was a PR83, maybe, you know, because they did, I think that's good that they don't use that anymore, but uh, I guess I'm underwhelmed with the paint, but I do think the palette is really fun and well-made, except for the ring on the back, um, and it's, it's really compact, and it will fit in your pocket, and it's, you know, it is nice for that. I do think you're going to need better paint and a better brush if you want to do any serious painting with it. So consider that if you really love this palette, but you want better paint, compare prices between the professional one and the Cotman one. And if the price, if you don't have tubes of paint already and the price is not that different, you might want to upgrade to the professional one. I will link them down below. You can compare. I'll link it to um, Amazon and also Blick so you can see if the prices are that much different. Generally, sets tend to be cheaper on Amazon and, um, and individual tubes and pans tend to be cheaper on Blick, so it's just um, it's just it definitely is worth knowing because you can you can pay a lot more to save money on Amazon. <laughs> I guess I should say. Gosh, I don't want to sound salty, but I just feel like I, I just feel frustrated. I just feel frustrated. I don't know, but anyway, I mean, I I can't say I enjoyed painting this this little geranium. This kind of growing. It was some. I thought it was weed actually, but we looked it up. It's actually geranium. I did not enjoy using that brush, uh, on, and I probably would have had a better opinion of the paints using different brushes, but even still, uh, I just feel like the decisions that have been that have been coming to pass with Windsor Newton products have been only to benefit the bottom line of the company and not the the empowerment of artists and the um, the value for artists. It's too bad. I know there's a lot more competition. I know that it's probably harder to make a living selling paint, um, but I wouldn't think that's the time to slack off and and create worse stuff. I think that would be the time to innovate, innovate and make things better. But maybe you can't. Maybe you can't for the money that people are expecting to pay. I don't know. So, I mean, I'm sure that's a factor, but I just, I'm just disappointed. I've always liked Windsor Newton and I feel like that they are just making some bad choices as of late. But anyway, that's that. Uh, you can let me know what you think in the comments below. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll be happy to help if I can. And um, till next time, happy crafting!